PNG and Secret proudly present the NWSL Challenge Cup today. Houston and Portland face off in the semifinals presented by Budweiser. Welcome in. I'm Josh Toll and with me is the keeper, Jen Cooper. And Jen, we make our way over to Rio Tinto Stadium here in Sandy, Utah for the first semifinal match of the game against Houston and Portland. Two teams that historically Portland has dominated this series when these two have met. By far, Josh, only twice in their history has Houston come out on top, and it hasn't been since 2016 since they've done so. The worst loss of the 2019 season for Houston came at Portland about a year ago this week. Horrible 5-0 loss. You know Dash are looking to take advantage of being the top seed, having healthier players. A big chance for them to show that they're not the same old Dash. Portland, they've got history behind them. Very few teams have been to the playoffs as many times as they have. They're a two-time NWSL champion. Only once have they missed the postseason. Dash have never qualified for postseason play. And that's going to be a big thing going in tonight. Seeing who's going to step up as Houston Dash look for their first win against the Portland Thorns since 2016. It coming in an elimination match today in our first game of the semifinals. We'll have all the action for you. We'll have starting 11. We return right here on Twitch. And we are underway, Houston in the orange kits, the Portland Thorns in the white kits. For the Portland Thorns, their win against North Carolina snapped a seven game winless streak. They're looking to build off that momentum. Houston looking to build off that PK win as they have another elimination match here against the Portland Thorns. We talked about their struggles against the Thorns in the beginning. Historically, the Thorns have dominated just two wins for the Houston Dash all time against Portland. And it's important to note that both of those wins, Josh, came during international windows. So 2015, when World Cup players were gone, 2016, when Olympic players were gone, which means Sinclair played in neither of those games. Groom. Looking to thread this one at Daly, and right there is Kelly Hubley, who's been tremendous at center back, filling in for Becky Sauerbrunn. A, a bit overshadowed by Britt Eckerstrom's amazing performance in the quarterfinal, but Kelly Hubley was just as vital to earning that 1-0 that win over the defending champions. And you have to give credit to Portland. They have suffered a lot of frustrating injuries in this tournament, not even getting to use Adriana Franch, so starting with backup keeper, and then that backup keeper goes down. Becky Sauerbrunn injured after the first game, now not having Haran. Reynolds, another big veteran part of that team. But it seems like as they are replacing those veterans with bench players or players who've been waiting on the wings <laughs> for a couple of seasons to get some minutes, uh, you know, they're, they're still playing very cohesively. Mingus will play this back, and Eckerstrom We'll send it towards midfield and going up is Schmidt to win that ball for Houston, but Salem right there. Weaver, the rookie, scoring her first NWSL goal in the win against North Carolina. Weaver out of Washington State was the number two overall pick in this year's NWSL draft. 
What a way to get your first NWSL goal to help send your team on to the semifinals. And there's a look at Nadine Nanger, who technically is the backup keeper for today. They had to assign her as an emergency replacement with the injury to Bella Bixby. I liked hearing from Mark Parsons that nobody panicked when they heard that Bella Bixby was out with injury because of just the high level of training they had seen from Britt Eckerstrom and, and how well Nutty Unger has trained these keepers. Hubbley plays it to Mingus. Kristen Westfall getting the start today. And she plays it forward. Westfall last two seasons with Rain FC. Now, of course, OL Rain. Jane Campbell with a couple terrific saves in that PK shootout against Utah Royals FC. James Clarkson had joked with me before the tournament that, you know, he was confident that they had Jane in their back pocket with her history of PK saves, but you know they didn't want to have to go to that. Prince trying to throw that one to Vizali. Great look by the Canadian trying to find Vizali. She just couldn't get a touch on it. Prince sending it up to Vizali, who's right there, but can't get the right kind of touch on it. Nice combination from those two on the front line. Vizali, one of the newest dash players, having just joined the team in late May, coming over from the UK. Playing a bit out of position from where she played when she was in FAWSL, she played more as a number 10. Zali popping it over the top, looking for Daly. Daly, of course, one of two players on this dash team with multiple goals, Shea Groom being the other, both of them with two goals and one assist. As she sends it in towards the back post, and that's gonna go over Prince. And Rachel Daly and Shea Groom are in the best position to have a chance at taking the golden boot away from Lynn Williams. Lynn Williams with three goals. Sure, she's out of the tournament, but she still has the most goals. She has one assist. Groom and Daly also each have one assist. So the tiebreaker after that would be, say they got more goals, uh, would be least minutes played. So for Groom and Daly, if they want to grab the golden boot from Lynn Williams, they're going to need another assist on top of another goal or two goals. This one flipped back and there's Allie Price getting a start for the injured Megan Oyster as that goes off Morgan Weaver. Of course, of course, Josh, I'm sure that the Dash would just be happy to have a win. Uh, they're probably thinking less about Golden Boot and the other awards. I have a feeling when you're a player, you're, you don't think about it until someone reminds you about yeah. it. Yeah. It's a nice trophy to have, but you don't necessarily go pursuing it. And if you're Lynn Williams and your team's out, you're probably really not concerned if you end up with that trophy. Rodriguez. Rodriguez, an assist on that goal for Morgan Weaver and the win against North Carolina. Her first assist in a Portland Thorn uniform. She served that one up on a platter to Morgan Weaver. Also did a lot of the work kind of shutting down North Carolina's midfield club leader in fouls at this point. Klingenberg goes across the pitch to Westfall. Mingus looking to send it in. And that one right into the arms of Jane Campbell. So these clubs met three times last season, Josh. The first meeting in Houston, Dash were ahead 1-0. And just in a matter, I think it's maybe 10, 15 minutes. Portland scored twice, took the game 2-1. Very frustrating game for James Clarkson. They met a month later in what was the worst game or worst loss of the season for the Dash, falling 5-0 at Portland for those goals coming in the first 30 minutes. And then their final meeting was part of that, that final stretch of the season for Houston where the results didn't necessarily show their progress, but their tight defense, their cohesive play, they held Portland to one goal in Portland, and that was the only goal that Portland scored like in a six game stretch. So 
three very different games last season, but still, we've talked about the history. Houston has not beat Portland since 2016, and that was a game with a lot of their backup players. You could say this is a game with a lot of their backup players, but you've got a player like Christine Sinclair on the field. You've got a veteran like Megan Klingenberg, Angela Salem, and then the goalkeeper performance that we've seen from Britt Eckerstrom. It's gonna be hard to break them down. Brett Eckerstrom with one of the best goalkeeper performances you will see. Take a look back at that game whenever you have a chance. She was absolutely phenomenal as this is played out to the end line. And you can re-watch all of the NWSL Challenge Cup games. International fans, just go to nwslsoccer.com slash replays. All the games are there. Keep in mind, you have to be anywhere but USA or Canada to access those. But the entire tournament is available for rewatching. So rewatch to your heart's content. And hey, you can even go back through the schedule pages and watch anything from 2016 to 2019. All the games are there. Back post ball by Mewis. First corner of the afternoon for either team. And we got to give a shout out, Josh, not only to the stadium being at Rio Tinto, the official home of the Utah Royals. But we've also noticed that uh, this stadium now has its own Twitter account in honor of the tournament, so. You gotta love the fans and their creativity. <laughs> <laughs> the different ones, although we won't see the playground anymore. Or the farm. Or the farm, yes. We hopefully will not have to worry about a glare account. There are mountains, but it's a different view of the mountains. Yeah, so you got two stunning views. The first one that we saw at Zions Bank Stadium and now at Rio Tinto Stadium just nestled in the Wasatch Mountains here in Sandy, Utah. Zmingus plays it up and right there is Naughton. Naughton plays it outside. Bro coming here in the final third for the Thorns. Naughton the only Iron Woman uh, among the field players on the dash. She's played every minute. No Iron Women on Portland, not even goalkeepers, of course, with, with the rotation. Bure, back to West Ball. Charlie, towards the end line. Charlie looking to cross in that one, headed away by Naughton. And then Prince comes to clear it away as Rodriguez gets chase. Well, that I thought was off Rodriguez. This is going to stay with the Thorns. Opportunity here for Portland. Sinclair looking for Weaver, finds the rookie. An offside flag up against Morgan Weaver. The rookie getting the game winner against North Carolina, becoming just the second rookie to score in the tournament. Of course, Zierra King having the equalizer against Houston in, in that opening match of the group stage, or rather first round, not group stage. Campbell, one of three goalkeepers to start every game here in this Challenge Cup. The other two being Kaylin Sheridan, who plays later on tonight, and Aubrey Bledsoe. Bledsoe eliminated with Washington Spirit. I think it's interesting, Josh, the way the bracket fell with the seeding. On one side of the bracket, we have the teams that are aligned with MLS clubs. So we have Houston versus Portland. The other side, we have Independence, uh, Chicago versus Sky Blue, and they're both clubs that played in WPS. So it's like, New school versus old school, or Starbucks versus independent coffee shop. I, you know, many, many ways you can look at that. Of course, another thing moving over to Rio Tinto was the coffee, I guess the wagon, whatever you want to call it specifically, but the roasters coming over here for all these players. It's been great to see fans and different supporters donating coffee to these teams throughout this tournament. Yeah, we know the, the players were really happy when they came over to Rio Tinto for their first practice. Like, oh, the coffee came with us. Awesome. Hansen giving chase. Hansen getting the start once again at right back. Second straight game. 
Of course, we've seen Aaron Simon back there as well for the dash. Rodriguez in her first season with the Thorns as this is played up. I think it's been interesting to see Prysock at outside back. She played center back all of last year, and that's what she played in college. She and I talked last week about how it was a little strange to, to move to outside back, but she's been really pleased with the camaraderie among the defensive crew. Sinclair. Christine Sinclair, she has not scored a goal in her last 11 NWSL games, but always a threat. She talked about the game against North Carolina and how they did not expect to go to the quarterfinals. They expect to win this tournament. They said, yeah, it was surprising having to play North Carolina, but at some point they had to beat them and they did. I loved her attitude of like, it doesn't matter. You're gonna have to beat them to win. So let's not worry about facing them in the quarterfinal. And even if her name doesn't show up on the score sheet, you know she's very influential in how the team plays, what's happening in the locker room, how the team trains. That ball headed up by Naughton. Klingenberg was looking for Simone Charlie. As Hansen comes up and drops back, Prysock giving chase. Sir Charlie right there in the area as this comes to Bure. Sinclair. Rodriguez back to Sinclair. Give and go action here. Headed by Schmidt, Bure. This will find Angela Salem, the veteran, getting another start with the Portland Thorns here. Charlie down the line and Chapman's gonna beat her to the ball. Alicia Chapman, the longest tenured member of this Dash roster. With Kalia Watt being traded to Chicago Ari Romero being waived and Bianca Henniger retiring. There are no dash players left from the club's inaugural season in 2014. Perlum having a tremendous impact here in this NWSL Challenge Cup as we'll take a look back at this foul. She makes the turn, gets past Hubley. I'm not sure if it's Sinclair from behind or Salem that brought her down. Groom acquired from Rain in the off season coming home in a sense to the state where she went to, to college playing at Texas A&M. Parker Home also making the transition back to the 10 spot. Last year played on the wing with OL Reign. She feels that she's more creative when she drops back as opposed to being outside. Schmidt to Groom. Prince sends it in at the six. That one just over Daly. Chapman. Schmidt. Looping one outside to Prince. Prince sends it right back, but right to Britt Eckerstrom. Well, for Britt Eckerstrom, first start in the quarterfinals, eight saves. Bella Bixby, who started the four previous, had 12 saves. But eight in one game for Eckerstrom. Here's the cross from Prince. Gets to the head of Rachel Daly. It's not what she wanted to do with it. But good possession by the Dash. Nice distribution by Sophie Schmidt, the oldest player on the Dash roster. She had to drop back and play center back last game after Megan Oyster went out injured. Groom trying to slot that one over to Prince. And this, this is played out by Megan Klingenberg. Klingenberg, a former Dash player. She spent her first two seasons of NWSL on the Dash, 2014 and 2015, before she was traded to Portland as part of a, a series of trades related to the expansion draft for Orlando. And I know that's one thing fans are curious about, Josh, is how is expansion gonna work for Louisville for 2021? And then of course, LA for 2022. You already have fans going, oh, is Christian Press gonna go to LA? Is Alex Morgan gonna go to LA? One thing at a time, fans. Gotta deal with Louisville expansion first. 
Sledding times coming up, and it's beginning with Louisville FC. I should say racing Louisville FC to give a full name. They've already sold more than a thousand season tickets. Karum is showing those hops once again, going up and winning that aerial. Daly. Plays it outside to Prince. Prince charging forward, backing up his Klingenberg. On the ground. Roman and Mingus, the two players involved there. Mingus winning for Portland. Hanson trying to win it back for the dash. Weaver switches sides. And the Canadian Chapman plays it up, but right to Angela Salem. Played all the way to the inline and goal kick coming for Jane Campbell. And it's hard to believe, Josh, looking at this venue, that this field is not bigger than the one at Zions Bank Stadium, right? But it's just how the, the stadium around it makes everything seem larger, it makes those banners in the stand seem so much smaller. I went to the inaugural Utah Royals game at this venue two years ago. More than 19,000 in attendance, the largest ever inaugural game for a club in NWSL, even beating Portland's inaugural game from 2013. That pass cut out by Katie Naughton. And that will hit off Klingenberg. Or actually, I have to correct myself. I was wrong, Orlando had a bigger one. They had 23,000. For Houston, they have not scored a goal in their last three games. You have to go back to when they played Rain, OL Rain, where they scored two goals in that one. At this point, it's been nearly 325 minutes since the Dash have scored a goal. They did have five goals in the first round in the first two games. A great look at 33-year-old Mark Parsons. You were talking about it before, how he's the youngest coach in the NWSL. will be 34 next month. Looks can be deceiving. And not only youngest coach, but he's one of the few coaches that has been coaching in the league since the inaugural season. Chapman sends it in with the left foot. Prince. Gets around Klingenberg, sends it towards the six, and Westfall heads it away. Not coming up on Charlie. Charlie denied there by Schmidt. For Simone Charlie scoring her first NWSL goal in the first game of the preliminary round. Hansen. Hansen tripped up by Weaver, and that's going to draw the foul. Hansen, Dash's top draft pick in 2018, went number seven overall. Just a few months later, got her first cap with the U.S. national team. Soccer fans, the official shop of the NWCL is now open. Visit nwclshop.com now and sign up to be the first to receive special offers and promotions. nwclshop.com, the official place to gear up and support your favorite team. Sinclair, and she'll switch sides. Christine Sinclair, it seems like she is ageless. Mark Parsons talking about how a happy sink is a happy team. Loves how she can hold up the ball and play in between the lines. Still a threat, even though she has yet to score a goal here in this Challenge Cup. You can never sleep on one of the world's greatest scores. And it's not like she hasn't been scoring because, of course, earlier this year, she broke Abby Wambach's world record for international goal. She's now at 186 on 296 caps. Sophie Schmidt, her Canadian teammate playing for Dash is at 199. 
Couple more Canadians in this with Alyssa Chapman and Michelle Prince as well for the dash as this is played back by Canadian Sophie Schmidt. And Megan Kelly on the bench for dash. She has yet to see any minutes in this tournament. Most teams have used almost all their players. Portland, the only Portland field player, well, only Portland player, period, because they've used all their keepers, who hasn't played is Annika Rodriguez, one of the trialists they signed before the tournament. Dash have three players on the bench who have yet to see the field. Kayla McCoy, drafty Bridget Andrzejewski, and Megan Kelly. Chapman. Daly looking for Prince. And Hubley will usher this one back to Britt Eckerstrom, and now she'll play it into the stands. Eckerstrom with her second straight start. Zali. Daly with the right, and that one scooped up by Eckerstrom. Easy stop there for the keeper. Rachel Daly sitting on two goals, one assist. She's led the team in scoring the last three years. Last season tied with Sofia Huerta. They're both on five goals, but of course, Daly spent half the season with England for the Women's World Cup. Schmidt looking over to Chapman. Prysock stepping up, poking that over as it will continue on. First game here, the semifinals at Rio Tinto Stadium. All the games previously played at Zions Bank Stadium. Josh Toll and the keeper, Jen Cooper, with you once again here on Twitch. For North Carolina, they fell to this Portland team. Portland getting their first win of the NWSL Challenge Cup, as we'll have a foul against Portland. These teams faced off, Josh, in the Houston Dash's inaugural game back in April. 2014, of course, none of these Dash players were on that roster, but Christine Sinclair played for Portland Thorns in that game. Thorns winning 1-0 at BBVA Stadium in Houston. Dash, the first ever expansion club in NWSL. The, the league went from eight teams in its first season to nine in 2014. Orlando added in 2016. Of course, we had some teams fold and others added, but not, not for expansion. So racing Louisville next year will be a big step to get back to 10 teams. And Zali, the slow player to get up for Houston. And then LA will be team number 11. We've never had a pro league this large for women's soccer in the US. WSA was always eight teams and WPS never more than nine. Here's a look at that foul. Looks like Bure just got a, a tough step on Vizali's foot. Just right on the toe of the foot. Vizali struggling. <laughs> trying to walk it off. Never feels good when someone steps on your feet when yeah. it's just a regular shoe, when you add in studs. I like that her face says one thing and her body says something else. You know, the, the, the pro soccer player is like, no, I'm gonna keep playing. The face is like, that does not feel good. Zali had a couple of great chances in the quarterfinals against Utah. She's just continuing to get better here as this Challenge Cup has progressed. And we can say she had the hockey assist on the opening goal for Dash playing against the rain. Katie Nahn will play it back. Katie Nahn and Kelly Hubley were actually high school teammates at Elk Grove High School, so they're getting to see one another once again here in the NWSL. It's always great when you get those stories that date back all the way to high school when players play with one another. 
And I'm sure Megan Oyster and Katie Naughton played together in suburban Chicago back in the day. Their hometowns are not very far apart. Of course, Oyster on the bench after, uh, I guess you could say fractured rib. It's listed as thorax on the injury report, but that pretty tough collision in the game against Utah in the quarterfinal. It was gonna be a day-to-day -day situation. James Clarkson talked about it. Maybe she had a couple more days, she'd be able to go for sure. But they weren't quite positive, so they wanted to wait till the last minute. Westfall. Yeah, a situation like that is more about pain management than anything else. And of course, Catherine Reynolds out for Portland with this game after her collision with Lynn Williams. Just resting her for concuss concussion protocol. She did have a few stitches after that game. Lindsay Horan out with the hip injury. While she's listed as questionable, she's on the bench, but we don't really see her dressed for the game. Chapman sends it with left. Falling down in the box with Shea Groom. Alicia Chapman, all tournament, Josh. We've seen her really pushing up on that left flank creating chances. She has no NWSL goals to her credit, but frankly, I wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if, if we see her get one or at least create one for one of her teammates. Pretty even game so far. Neither team with a great opportunity. The best chance coming from Rachel Daly about five minutes ago, but an easy save for Britt Eckerstrom. Now we've had three straight scoreless quarterfinals in a row, Josh. So I, I'm hoping to invoke the broadcaster uncursed by saying, will we have another? And then suddenly somebody scores, right? The only team that did not go to PKs was this Portland Thorns team against North Carolina. We've talked about Houston having not scored in the last three games. Team that scored five goals in this tournament, second best behind North Carolina. Hansen. And that one continues over the head of Daly. Houston at one point did hold the league record for scoreless minutes, more than six games back in 2016, when they finally exploded for three goals in one game. And who was that against? That was against Portland, of course, with all their Olympic players gone. Thankfully, Washington Spirit took away that, that record from Dash a couple years later. Hansen will just play this to safety. Though it is, it's not too surprising how close all four quarterfinals were and that even though some were scoreless, we've seen that in World Cup tournaments. You know, once you get to the knockout rounds, you know, the competition's getting tighter. Players a little bit more tired. Daly just on the edge of the area. To the spot, but no one there for the dash. Prince was trailing, Mewis was on a far side. Sinclair on the wing. Klingenberg. Sinclair switches sides, finds Bure. Bure puts this one high in the sky, looking for Charlie. Sinclair stepping through. And Charlie drops it back to Rodriguez. Westfall. Looking for the rookie Weaver and just too far. Morgan Weaver was right there, just could not get to it as we will have our hydration break here. We are scoreless between Houston and Portland. You are watching the NWSL right here on Twitch. Made two saves in that penalty kick shootout against Utah, eliminating the home team. Rodriguez takes it away from Hansen. Rodriguez to her right. And this one played up by Chapman. Prince with a chance, Mingus backing off. Prince, and that one played out for a corner. 
So well played by Emily Menges. Gets the touch on the ball without committing a foul. She's gone entire seasons as center back without committing a foul. Judges Nichelle Prince's run wisely. Goes in for the touch at the right moment to keep that ball out of danger. Giving up a corner, but of course you'll always give up a corner instead of a goal. Mangus out of Georgetown. She spent her entire career with the Thorns. Left-footed ball coming from Christy Mewis. Mewis has assisted on a corner. Is this a sent in and then bobbled around, still loose. And that one is blocked by Sinclair. Daly wanted a handball. Not gonna get it. Chance there for Houston as that ball was loose in the six. She claimed it was off Sinclair's hand. Sinclair, you could tell her motion to the ref was no, that bounced off my chest. Hansen. Mewis looking for Vasali. That could have been Houston's best chance because it was really just a mess in front of goal. So many people, Eckerstrom down on the ground. Looks like it hit Sinclair's shoulder. It doesn't look like I'd call that a handball, especially when it bounced away from her. And there you can right? see Sinclair, like you were saying, patting her chest. Yeah. Of course, if you're daily, you want that handball call, you want a chance to have it, a PK opportunity, which we have yet to see in regulation. Crazy that we've gone this, go this long with no PKs attempts in regulation, no own goals, no red cards. Does that mean I'm invoking a red card? <laughs> Lots of yellows, but of course, all the yellow cards reset after the quarterfinals. So no one's sitting on a yellow card at this point. Of course, if you got two yellows or a straight red in this game and your team advanced, you would miss the final. But no one has to worry about yellow card accumulation at this point. U.S. looking for Prince. And Prince runs out of room. Christy Mew is one of six players to score in every NWSL season. She's also scored here in this Challenge Cup. And one of many who have played every season of the league, obviously, if she scored in every season. But there are very few who have spent the whole, the, their whole NWSL career with the same club. Daly. Daly and Schmidt not on the same page on that run. We were talking about Mingus's defense earlier. Two times she's been named second best 11. 2016, she was best 11. That's the year Portland finished number one in the standings, claiming the NWSL Shield. Portland just building with patience right now. But there's Groom to swipe it away. Daly, we're gonna slot that one through to Groom. Mingus right there once again for the Thorns. Chapman. Not in her first season here with the Houston Dash. Plays it all the way back to Campbell. Campbell, a quiet opening 38 minutes. It's gotta feel good after the number of saves she had to make even before the shootout in the match versus Utah. I'm sure Britt Eckerstrom is feeling the same way. It's like, it's good. I don't, you know, I don't have to stand on my head every 10 minutes. But if you haven't seen the highlights of Britt Eckerstrom's performance against North Carolina, I would definitely Google that. And as we mentioned before, you can rewatch all of the games. If you're outside USA or Canada, just go to nwslsoccer.com slash replays. You can watch any game from the tournament. Hansen will play it back. Prysock. Prysock with a start today for the injured Megan Oyster. Prince turning away from Klingenberg. Groom looking to go back to Prince.
Klingenberg doing the same, the smart thing, just shielding Prince away from the ball. Prince had one goal for Houston last year in their season opener versus the Reign. She left for the World Cup a few games later and, and unfortunately was unable to return because of a meniscus injury suffered during the World Cup. Eckerstrom, one of three keepers out of Penn State in this tournament, the only school that can claim three keepers in this tournament. Of course, one of the others is Amanda Dennis on the bench for Houston Dash. There, look at Lindsey Horan. Horan, at least with the first half off here for Portland. Sus Bure getting the start for her. Sus Bure has seen plenty of action in this tournament. Rodriguez stops. Question is, Josh, do they have somebody that can provide those amazing header goals like Lindsay Horan? Wonderful goal against Washington Spirit in the group stage off a of Megan Klingenberg corner, or not corner free kick. That one just rises, and there's Sinclair getting her best look here on the Challenge Cup. Just could not lower the angle. Ball coming from the back over her shoulder. She's onside. Haley Hansen getting there to pressure. Sinclair with the left. A little bit of a volley sending it over. Sinclair with an excellent chance there for the Thorns. Scoreless here as we approach halftime. Of course, we'll have highlights and stats for you. Hansen. And Weaver wins the ball. Has Charlie up front, that's where she goes. Cut out by Naughton. Westfall, far side. Klingenberg. Klingenberg goes out to Rodriguez. Salem. Charlie will drop it back, and once again, Portland just being patient here. Holding possession. Looking for a spot that they can find an opening against this dash defense. Bure drops it back. Salem lost one forward and going up to get its groom. Good job by Houston's back line of holding steady. Charlie. Bure now has two players on her. Chapman, the Sawyer right there as well. Dash about to go another half without a goal. Josh, they're approaching 350 minutes without having scored a goal. Westfall is trying to find Charlie. We'll have another throw. Schmidt wins the ball for the dash. Sinclair, not it forward. Weaver heading it on. Good build up by the Thorns there. Just nothing to show at the end. Jane Campbell's been Dash's starter since June 2017, her rookie season. She has 
played every match in NWSL play for the club since then. She holds the league record for consecutive starts and goal. You know, but my favorite stat about Jane, Josh, is both her parents were fighter pilots. It's not a bad thing to have, your parents <laughs> being fighter pilots. I mean, I think that that would give you a little bit of a competitive edge. Her mother was in the very first class of women to attend the U.S. Naval Academy. And then the misplaced pass there by Katie Not, or excuse me, by Emily Mignus. And now here a chance for Houston late to put pressure on that back line of Portland. Hansen, Prince, Klingenberg in front of her, crossing six, and Daly just could not nod it on frame. Great, great pass in there by Nichelle Prince. She's had a couple beautiful balls into the box. Coming on the right side, lofting it with her right foot, again trying to find Rachel Daly's head. And again, Daly not connecting the way she wants to, not able to keep that on frame. Prince had a ball earlier in this half that she sent to Vasali that was just off target. As Prysock will play this back to Campbell. The pressure there from rookie Morgan Weaver. Smart play by Weaver to pressure the keeper, take advantage of any opening you see. He was trying to get around Sinclair. Sinclair wins the ball for the Thorns. Bure. Back to Sinclair. Looking for Charlie. You can see the frustration there on Sinclair's face. She knew she had an opportunity there with Charlie on the far post. Both these teams are going to go into the locker room at halftime pretty frustrated. I have to say, Josh, I think this is our first overcast day of the entire tournament. Of course, it's when we move to Rio Tinto Stadium. <laughs> Salem, that one off the back of Schmidt. Masali right in there with Charlie, and Charlie wins the ball back to Westfall. Bure giving a run at the end line. And Chapman comes over right into the body of Bure. Saying Bure push her down. We'll take a look back at this replay. Bure just standing up there, a little bit of a shoulder. I think when Chapman sees that replay, she feel a little bit differently. She was definitely not shoved with the arms, but I, I'm sure she feels like she was. Corner here for the Thorns. And Schmidt right there at the spot. Prince now with a chance to run. Vasali coming forward. Daly in there as well. Prince trying to get around Mingus. And you can see the thought process there by Prince trying to get it to either Daly or Vasali as we take a look at our secret virtual watch party powered by Google Meet. With Bianca Henninger for the Houston Dash in the watch party. Gotta and love that, former players. The first half has come to an end as we will go to the locker room scoreless between the Houston Dash and the Portland Thorns. So some time to catch their breath and decide how they want to come out and attack in the second half as both of them looking for that first goal and a chance to move on to the championship game, which will be played right here at Rio Tinto Stadium on Sunday at 1230. But at half, 
Houston zero, Portland zero. We'll be back with highlights and stats for you right here on Twitch. And Emily Ogle will replace Celeste Bure. And Gabby Seiler is replacing Angela Salem. Interesting sub bringing in Seiler for Salem, who was so key in that quarterfinal win over North Carolina, disrupting North Carolina's play, even getting a shot off towards the end. Rodriguez looking for Charlie, and right there is Chapman. The Portland Thorns, they come in with 45 shots on the game, second most in the NWCL Challenge Cup behind only North Carolina, but have yet to have a shot on target in this one. What's interesting, when you look at the stats so far in the tournament, Houston have been incredibly efficient when it comes to goal scored off of their shots on goal. But based on this game so far, they need more shots, more shots on goal, and they need to finish. They've been trying to play the numbers game of let's keep shooting, let's keep shooting. Doesn't matter if it's not on target, right? And we've seen how successful Portland can be playing the opportunistic game, especially when you're missing a lot of your starters. Only takes that one goal, changes the whole game. Rodriguez. Rodriguez now trying to figure out different things with Gabby Seiler and Emily Ogle, the first substitutions. Of course, both teams have five substitutions. This is played out by Kelly Hubley. And with Ogle coming on, that's another member of the Penn State squad from 2015 that won the first ever women's soccer national title for the, Nit excuse me, for the Nittany Lions. Rocky Rodriguez, Emily Ogle, and Britt Eckerstrom, all part of that squad. Offside flag up. Ogle was Portland's only draft pick last year. They tend not to build their squad via draft very often. Of course, this year was very different. Portland taking the number one and number two picks. This one cleared away by Mingus. And a throw here for the dash. Dash, no substitutions as of yet. They will keep their same starting 11 that they began with. Prince, who had a great first half. She had three good crosses. Just unable to link up with any of her dash teammates. Six total on the half. Leads the team, of course. No one on Portland had more than one, and that might be the secret to the dash success in this game. If someone can just finish one of those crosses coming from Nichelle Prince. I feel Prince and Sophie Schmidt have been the most solid players for the dash in this game. Schmidt doing excellent work as defensive mid. Communicates really well with that back line. And Schmidt right there to step up in front of Rodriguez. Mewis, Vasali to her left. That's where she goes. Groom. Weaver trying to touch that on. And Prysock will be called for the foul. Prysock smart to stay glued to Morgan Weaver's side. As we saw against North Carolina, Weaver, even with Addison Merrick right by her, still managed to convert the game winner against North Carolina. Weaver, the second overall draft pick. Of course, Sophia Smith went number one to the Portland Thorns, but she is yet to play here in this Challenge Cup with an injury. Back-to-back -back picks for the Thorns as they had a roster overload. A lot of new faces in for Mark Parsons. This one slotted through. Charlie wins the battle here with Chapman. Vizzoli back deep. Chapman getting the work done. Vizzoli coming to help and smartly kicking it off of Westfall to win Dash a corner deep. Siler. 
Weaver drops it off. Ogle, that one off Price Sock. Weaver plays it to Charlie. Charlie trying to cut in. And once again, Chapman denies Charlie. Westfall cuts back. Siler loses possession to Mues. He was grabbed from behind. Advantage to Houston. Groom charging forward. And once again, Siler grabbing at Groom. Daly has a couple players in the middle and then lays it out behind the netting. A lot of work there for no reward. It took a while for Houston to get that out of their end, but they finally broke through. Groom taking the ball, shaking off Siler, sending it through to Daly, who's just a little too deep to get that on frame. Houston had numbers there, just couldn't get anything at the end. Got to wonder how that counter is going to play a factor here in the second half for both these two teams. Somehow kept in by Charlie. No, there is a late whistle. And Chapman comes over. I like the new back of the jersey sponsor for Dash Kushada. That's actually a resort and casino really close to where Alicia Chapman went to school at LSU. Lewis. Mingus right there. Mingus has had an excellent game here for the Portland Thorns of denying anything in that box for the Houston Dash. Mingus drafted by the Thorns in 2014. She's played every knockout game in the club's history except for the inaugural season. Pricehawk steps forward. Gives it right back. Rodriguez looking for Charlie. Simone Charlie with her first NWSL goal. That one coming in the opening game against North Carolina in the preliminary round. She had a couple of assists last season. Charlie giving chase. And Nan plays this out for a throw. Portland was looking at their second corner there nearly. Let's look at Mark Parsons as he gets a glass of water. Mark Parsons has taken Portland to the playoffs and in this tournament, the knockout round, every season he's been head coach, dating back to 2016. I saw a great stat tweeted by Dan Laletta from Equalizer Soccer today. This is the first time since 2015 that a knockout round of Andy Vassell does not feature Paul Riley or the team he's coaching, whether it be Western New York Flash or North Carolina. First time for everything, right? Of course, Portland getting their only win so far of this Challenge Cup in quarterfinals against the North Carolina Courage. And that's why the seeding after the first round is so interesting when you're only judging on four games. And we know how close the competition is even when you're the top team or the bottom team. But it's one thing to base seeding on 24 games for a season. But after four games and coming into all the tiebreakers, some really interesting matchups. And that's why it's a little less surprising that we had seeds number six, seven, and eight upset one, two, and three. And of course, the 4v5 game went to penalties, so. Very close. Groom looking for Daly as that pass is chopped down. Ogle to Sinclair. Sinclair very active in that first half. Nearly had a goal, but sent it above the crossbar. She plays it to Weaver. Back to Sinclair. Sinclair lines it up, pauses. Ogle. Back post and Campbell comes out, ball still loose. And now pushed forward by the dash, but only as far as Kristen Westfall. She sends it in back post. Weaver. 
Little action there from the Thorns, challenging Jane Campbell. Jane Campbell tried to make a stop. The ball remained loose as we take a look back. Ogle sending the ball in to Charlie. Chapman's on Charlie's back. Jane Campbell comes out. Doesn't make a clean save, but at least gets in the way, gets her hand on the ball. And ultimately, the Dash are able to clear it out of danger. Coming to you from Rio Tinto Stadium. Lots of great women's soccer history in this game, not just NWSL. It was in this stadium 10 years ago, Josh, that Alex Morgan played her very first game in a USA jersey. And that was the only time the US women have played a snow game. 1-0 versus Mexico. They, they made snow angels on the field after the game winning goal. Houston and Portland, the first of our semifinal games here at Rio Tinto Stadium. Up later on tonight, you have Chicago and Sky Blue FC, that one at 10 Eastern. Of course, the final will be on Sunday. That one will be at 12.30 p.m. And just like the quarterfinals, neither the semifinals nor the championship will go to extra time if tied at the end of the regulation. They'll go straight to penalties. We saw three quarterfinal games go to PKs. The only one that did not was Portland and North Carolina. Ogle sends it in to the spot. And Charlie was able to get her head on it. And of course, voting is underway for best 11 of the tournament, future legend. Fans can vote for that. Just check out NWSL's Facebook page or Twitter feed or NWSLsoccer.com. I think voting lasts through, I think, tomorrow morning. Of course, we also have Golden Boot Award, like we've talked about. Right now, that's being led by Lynn Williams, the player down, Rachel Daly, right behind Williams. She has two goals and one assist. Her teammate, Shea Groom, with the same line. Westfall staying on her feet. Daly flipping over, winning the call. Morgan Weaver maybe not aware of the new rule change that you can't even come near the ball defensively. Towards the spot. Prince. Back post, no one there for the dash. Houston had the look set up. Prince was open. Just too much weight on that lofted pass. Houston looking a little bit dangerous there, though. Free kick sent up by Rachel Daly. And we are getting to that point where we start to see some subs. Historically, Portland has dominated this matchup. Last win for Houston coming back in 2016. And of course, the two times that they beat Portland in their history, Christine Sinclair was not on the field. This one will play all the way back to Jane Campbell. Campbell, a quiet first half, yet to see a shot on target. Hansen with the throw. Played up by Nunn, over the head of Daly Mingus, right there for the Thorns. Charlie in the circle. Charlie had a chance on a header a few minutes ago. But an easy stop for Jane Campbell. Charlie gained the star today. It was between her and Tyler Lucy. Mark Parsons feeling that she would get more of an offensive threat. Uh, it's been a while since we've had a goal, Josh, of course, since the first quarter final, but in the tournament, most of the goals have come in the second half. 
Naughton slows it down. Pizzoli looking to get around Ogle. Mingus at midfield. Looking for Charlie, chests it down. This one sent up, but no one forward for the Thorns. Still looking for both teams to be more consistent in that final third. Looking for a little bit more buildup to be a threat. As Rodriguez pokes it forward, but right there is Naughton. Neither team looking really great with their passing. Prince conversion. with the chance, and that one stopped by Eckerstrom. Another diving save. Well, we saw Eckerstrom make diving saves like that against North Carolina. First real challenge of the night coming from the Shell Prince. First diving save we've seen in this game. Prince again, the breakaway player coming into the box, getting the shot off. Eckerstrom's right there. Dash trying to play the rebound, and Eckerstrom gets that one as well. Just when I was saying that the passing hasn't been, the pass completion rate hasn't been very strong, but Prince has been doing a lot of great work on the flanks. For Eckerstrom, another solid save. And Emily Mingus and Christine Sinclair were talking about how positive she's been in this tournament before she even started in the quarterfinal game. Just happy and upbeat. She waited for a chance, and she's getting a second one. Here's this is sent in by Vasali, back post. Here, another great look at Prince. Trying to go to the left side, but coming out and cutting off the angle. Britt Eckerstrom doing a marvelous job here to get the save. Read that so well. And I like seeing, too, that the Dash are playing the rebound. Great look at our secret virtual watch party powered by Google Meet. And you can see the frustration there on the fans. We've seen some great saves here in this Challenge Cup tournament. Many of them coming from not just Britt Eckerstrom, but Bella Bixby as well for the Portland Thorns. Yeah, I think save of the tournament is going to be much harder to decide than goal of the tournament, Josh. We go back to last game. One save that really pops out for me for Britt Eckstrom is the one she had in Dabinia on the free kick where she bends it in over the wall going to the top corner. Yes. And Eckstrom full way out with a marvelous save. And if you look at that replay, you see Dabinia making the run just in case she gets a hand on hand on it. But she had sent it out, so Dabinia's run is like, wait, wait, there's not even a rebound to play? Like, what? Schmidt denying the path. He was lofting it on the scoop. And corner kick for Houston. As that last touch by, that one's last touch by Kelly Hubley. Third corner here for the Houston Dash, first of the second half. There's a good look at Megan Klingenberg with her special concussion preventing device that we've recently learned about, like changes the blood flow. Driven in. Zolly. Schmidt. And that one just rises past. I can't tell from that angle. Was she shooting on goal or crossing over to her teammates? Right footed dagger. Trying to cross it, I'm thinking, for the head of Mewis or Hansen. Schmidt played the first two seasons of Andy Bissell with Sky Blue. So she has scored, but not since that era. She returned to NUSL last year to play with Houston after spending several seasons in Germany. And Portland gives the ball right back to the dash at midfield. Dash looking for that first goal and possibly that first win against the Thorns since 2016. This is the first of our two semifinal games. Later on, we will have Chicago and Sky Blue for you. And 
And we will have another sub as Tyler Lucy will now enter for Portland and she'll replace Simone Charlie. Tyler Lucy out of Princeton. The only player drafted out of Princeton in the league, but the one of two Tigers in the entire league is Diana Matheson. It's also out of Princeton. Lucy with two game winners last year, both of them pretty late in the game. Three subs now used for Mark Parsons. James Clarkson has yet to use a sub for the dash. After Warner going forward, if this game does go to PKs, how these teams elect to use the subs going forward is this is slotted. Gabby Seiler. Seiler centers it, but no one there. Weaver trying to bump Bazali off the ball, but Bazali keeps her footing. Good run there by the Thorns. Seiler had space on that left side. She had numbers in the box to play back to as we get a look at U.S. Women's National Team coach Blacko Andonofsky. He's probably enjoying the change of scenery too, right? You don't see the playground. He doesn't get to go on the playground anymore, but a new view of the mountains. Look at 2018's MVP, Lindsey Horan. Prince. Hansen back outside. Prince at the end line. And another corner here for the Houston Dash. So much great work from the forward out of Ohio State today. It'd be nice to see her rewarded with a goal or an assist. But here at least she earns Dash a corner. Inward swinging ball. And now the corner will come to the other side for Houston. Good follow up by Vizali to play the rebound coming from Daly and play it off a Portland player. Dash is one of the few teams to score off a corner kick in this tournament. Lewis switches sides. The service. That one off the crossbar, the follow up, and that one goes in. And Houston has taken a one goal lead coming from Rachel Daly. Well, for Houston, you had to wait three and a half games, but they get their first goal dating back to the second game of the preliminary round. And Rachel Daly's goal has ended their scoreless streak of 375 minutes. Wonderful corner kick from Mewis. Schmidt heads it back on frame and in the mess in front of goal, a really smart header by Rachel Daly. Eckerstrom is already on the ground, not much she can do. And her defenders look like they're already in goal. Third goal of the tournament for Rachel Daly, her first since her brace in the opening game. She's now tied with Lynn Williams at the top of the Golden Boot standings, but of course has played more minutes. So she would need another goal or an assist if she wants to pass Lynn Williams. And for Eggerstrom, you're wondering, she was just sitting on that goal line. She could have turned her body. The ball hit off her and crossed the goal line. First goal for the Houston Dash. And now the Portland Thorns will have to play from behind. Here's where you'll probably see numbers begin to push forward for Portland. They've already used three subs. Portland played from behind in their opening match, getting an equalizer, but then ultimately giving up the game winner in stoppage time. Nice little turf burn there for Rachel Daly on the knee. And of course, that will have to get cleaned up. Rachel Daly in 2018, a career high of 10 goals. 
course, she represents England. One of those versatile players that she can play up top, but under Phil Neville, she was seeing a lot of outside back work. She of course, we'll, we'll have to wait to see who replaces Phil Neville for England head coach. He announced a while back that he would be moving on. His contract, I think, was through Euro 2021, but of course now that everything got bumped back. Today would have been the first soccer matches of the 2020 Olympic tournament, which has been pushed to 2021. So women's Euro to 2022, a lot of things shifting. Daly coming off the field, which is required since the trainer came on the field. I think she just has to be wait to be let on. Just a little bit more than 18 minutes remaining as Houston looks to possibly hold on to this one to zero lead to move on to the championship game. That will be on Sunday at 12.30 p.m. They're also looking for their first win in an elimination match. With that scoreless draw against Utah, that gets counted as a draw. Yes, they advanced on PKs, but that doesn't count as a win. This could be their first knockout win if they can prevent Portland from scoring, and it would be their first victory over Portland since 2016. Ball sent in. Looking for Tyler Lucy as Rachel Daly now back on the pitch. We'll let that roll out. Soccer fans, the official shop of the NWSL is now open. Visit nwslshop.com now and sign up to be the first to receive special offers and promotions. nwslshop.com, the official place to gear up and support your favorite team. And I did get confirmation today that international shipping will be added this week. We should see it before the championship game. But I would go to the shop now, nwslshop.com, sign up so that you get the discount code. As soon as international shipping is available, fans can buy gear for the tournament, a pride tee from any of the current nine clubs or Louisville. I don't think there's any Angel City FC merch yet, but I'm sure that's coming soon too. Siler trying to play that one outside to Weaver. Groom just outside the circle. Square ball, Chapman. Striding floor, no one stepping up as she plays it out wide, Mazzali. They're gonna go right back to Chapman. Chapman and Mazzali not on the same page. Almost 75 minutes in, Josh, and still we have not seen a sub from the Houston Dash. No one's gone an entire game without using subs, and nearly all the games in the tournament have featured all five subs used by both teams. Must be feeling nicer in, in Sandy, Utah with the overcast weather. Mewis with the left-footed ball. Mewis looking for her second goal of the tournament. For Houston, coming into the game, they had five goals, all assisted by different players. That Rachel Daly goal is the first goal in this Challenge Cup that is not assisted by another player. And all five of those goals before today coming in their first two games. Sinclair. Rodriguez. Played wide to Westfall. Westfall. Back post, and that one over the head of Weaver. Ogle giving chase, Hanson right there. Ogle wins possession. For Portland, they have two shots on target in this one, both coming in the second half. They're going to have to challenge Jane Campbell. Jane Cal Campbell coming into the game had 14 saves. As we will have our hydration break, we will head to that hydration break. 
Houston up one to zero against the Portland Thorns. We'll re be right back. You're watching the NWL right here on Twitch. Welcome back, Josh Toll and Jim Cooper with you. Houston up one to zero. Now on a goal coming from Rachel Daly. Been a little bit more than three and a half games now since Houston last scored. But right now, Rachel Daly giving the dash the one goal lead as Portland has a little bit more than 13 minutes to try to level this one up to send it to PKs possibly. Last time that Portland came from behind after going down a goal was early August of last year. They were hosting North Carolina at home, gave up an early goal to Crystal Dunn, came back to win that game 2-1, but Josh, both of those goals were own goals. It was the first and only NWSL game <laughs> with two own goals by the same team. For Portland, they've used three subs. Houston has yet to use a single sub in this one. You have to wonder if James Clarkson is to make a move at some point. What player he could bring in for defensive purposes is this is played to Prince. Megan Oyster, of course, questionable for the match since they didn't start her. I'm assuming they're not going to use her. You've got Aaron Simon, Christine Nairn unavailable due to general medical, which was on the injury report. Katie Stengel is available for this match. She was not dressed for the, the last match, but she is dressed and available for this one. I don't really see what you would change defensively as long as those players are feeling good, right? I think it'd be more up top to bring someone in for defensive help. Klingenberg. Looking at a fine Weaver coming back is Naughton. And corner here for the Portland Thorns. Good job there by Weaver of stretching that back line, making Naughton have to come over to play that out past the end line. Portland always so dangerous on these corners. Look at eight different players over five feet eight on this team. They have an aerial advantage over most teams. That one sent away by Naughton. Westfall wins the ball back. Sends it in towards the spot. Siler, that one blocked away by Hansen. All of Dash coming back to help defensively. Klingenberg. Hands to denying Klingenberg from getting around her, and Prince clears it away. So important for Dash to shut down the Thorns, finish the game clean. We have seen them off and on in the past, holding a lead and, and giving it up to allow a tie. And of course, in this game, a tie doesn't stand, right? You go straight to penalties. This could be the club's first ever knockout win, first win over Portland in, in four years. But still, 10 plus minutes to go. Hubley charging forward. Frysock sends it away, but right to Westfall. Westfall towards the top of the area. Ogle. Lucy, she's had a couple big game goals for Portland as this is playback, but right to Mewis. There you see Siler and Rodriguez tripping over. And Vasali in the area for the Houston Dash. Tori Penso, our referee for today, blowing her whistle. She did three first round games in one of the quarterfinals. Klingenberg always so dangerous on these set pieces. 
Portland's goal against Washington coming off a Klingenberg free kick. Sinclair. Klingenberg. Near side to Westfall. Westfall near the end line crosses. Daly trying to win the ball from Mingus. Good battle there. And then the late foul and free kick coming. One of the few times you'll see a player like Emily Mingus foul. Daly trying to make a run down the near side. Gets tangled up with Mangus. You can see Mangus holding her jersey, or maybe it's the edge of her shorts. Daly winning the call. Daly with a lone goal in this one. That one coming in the 69th minute. Came off as Sophie Schmidt's header that hit the crossbar. Daly was able to get the rebound and punch it home. Zali. Towards the spot, Prince, that one over the head. Prince doing so much great work today. Crosses, runs down the flank, almost connected well there. It's a quick look at our bracket. If Houston advances, they play the winner of Sky Blue and Chicago from tonight's semifinal championship game coming Sunday. It'll air on broadcast CBS in the U.S. and Canada, and of course here on Twitch everywhere else. Ogle just outside the area. Klingenberg, corner here for the Portland Thorns. Houston Dash looking for their first win against the Thorns since 2016. Trying to hold on to this one for just a little bit more than five minutes remaining. Dash getting their goal off a corner. 20th goal scored in the second half in this tournament. Not once again cleared away. She has been solid on clearances today for the Houston Dash. Only field player for Dash to play every minute of the tournament. On a big piece coming over in that trade for Kaylee Awad. And she has been tremendous once again here at center back for James Clarkson. Rodriguez plays it up, Sinclair. And that one just sent out a play by Sophie Schmidt. We saw the fight in this Portland team against North Carolina. They knew going into that quarterfinal how close it was going to be, how the odds were stacked against them, and they managed to pull off a 1-0 win. Here their best shot is earning a draw and going to PKs. This one to Lucy and just sends it off frame. Jane Campbell taking her time picking that up to burn a few seconds off the clock. And it sounds like we will be seeing our first Houston Dash sub of the day. Campbell sends us right to midfield. And that one goes off daily and now we should see that sub for Houston, and it will be CeCe Kaiser coming on for Christy Mewis. Kaiser drafted just one spot after Ali, Ali Prysock last year. Finished her collegiate career as Old Miss's all-time leading scorer. Most used sub for the Dash last year, so I'm not surprised she's the first sub on for the Dash today. Kaiser will look to 
hold Portland at bay as they look for that equalizer goal. We've seen some late goals for Portland. Tyler Lucy holds the latest goal in Portland history. She's on the field for the Thorns. One of the three subs that Mark Parsons has used. Mingus, diagonal ball. And keep in mind with the hydration breaks we've seen, there tends to be a little bit more stoppage time than a normal soccer match. First semifinal game of the day, Sky Blue in Chicago will play at 10 Eastern. First time we've also been at Rio Tinto Stadium. Daly is going to run out of room as this ball finds its way past the touchline. Sinclair was hitting the nose on that play as she's covering her mouth. Christine Sinclair, 49 career NWSL goals, 186 international goals. And keep in mind in this tournament, Josh, the team that scores first has never lost. A couple times they've tied, but they've never lost. That statistic bodes well for the dash. Portland hoping to change that number. At least trying to get that draw to send this to PKs. Prince looking for Daly. That one cut out by Hubley. Westfall weaving through. Mingus. Mingus steps inside. See Houston just playing back, making sure that Portland cannot get numbers in front of them. And now the ball over the top. I'm going to say handball, and this one touching the arm of Rachel Daly. And Daly is going to get a yellow card. I think she's going to get it for playing the ball backwards. Daly saying that she was tripped up by Klingenberg. Not really sure what that call was for. So now our first yellow card for Rachel Daly here in the semifinals. Thankfully, no accumulation at play in this from previous games. Of course, if she got another yellow, she would have to miss the final if Houston advances. And Portland will have six minutes of stoppage time to work with to try to find an equalizer. For Houston, they will try to add on to their goal total. Hearing we're gonna have another Houston sub. And it looks like we could have that sub right now or are they just gonna have Westfall move back? They're just gonna have Westfall move back so we will have to wait on the sub. Rodriguez, that one knocked out by Schmidt and now we will see the sub for the dash. And this will bring in Veronica Latsko and she'll replace Michelle Prince who had a fantastic game for the Houston Dash. I know player of the match usually goes to the player with the goal, but my player of the match would definitely be Michelle Prince. She had her hand on some good crosses. She was a headache for Megan Klingenberg today. Michelle Prince, her best game here of this NWSL Challenge Cup. You always wonder which player is going to step up and make a difference. We see many throughout this Challenge Cup, but today, Prince having her best game so far.
Houston looking to hold on for a little bit more than four minutes to move on to the championship game, which will be played on Sunday at 12.30 p.m. right here at Rio Tinto Stadium. Of course, 12.30 Eastern, so you're not sure what time that is for you. You know, just go to timeanddate.com and do the little time zone converter. Rachel Daly with a lone goal in this one coming in the 69th minute. Off a corner, too. This one played forward as we go out of play, and the Warrens look to get going once again. And rain picking up a little bit in Rio Tinto Stadium. First we'll time we're talking about rain, but not talking about OL rain. We've had <laughs> such an incredible run of weather for this tournament. Sinclair. Klingenberg. Klingenberg on so her. dangerous from the flanks. Klingenberg with the right foot. Headed up, and that one right into the outstretched arms of Jane Campbell. Campbell wisely brings it down, gets a few extra seconds on that. Give, give her teammates time to push forward. But we'll see a little boot ball here, send it long. Maybe not as long as she wanted. If this result stands, Josh, it's the first knockout win in franchise history for the Houston Dash and their first win over the Thorns since 2016. Thorns still have to be pleased with their performance in this tournament, given all, given all the injuries that they've had to deal with. Jane Campbell looking to hold on for her third clean sheet here in this NWCL Challenge Cup as Prysock plays this over. Dangerous pass there. Lucy was in pursuit for the Thorns. Jane's got 12 regular season shutouts. All-time club leader. And as you mentioned, this could be her third so far in the tournament. Lucy trying to thread to Weaver. Weaver with a chance, and Campbell dives on top of the ball. Weaver got beyond Prysock. Now Prysock's slow to get up. Prysock holding that calf. Hopefully this is just a cramp. At least she's stretching, as that's what it looks like. I'd always rather see that. And we've seen that happen throughout this tournament late in the games. These players cramp up. Breakaway, Weaver making the run, Prysock trying to get a foot on it, but it seems like the ball still ends up in the path of Morgan Weaver who gets the final touch. Yeah, bounces off of Weaver, Campbell comes out, makes the save. And now we will see Megan Kelly in for the Houston Dash. Looks like Marissa Everett will come in for Morgan Weaver. Morgan Weaver might stay on. A and little she'll confusion. have to wait. <laughs> we'll have to wait for those subs. And it sounds like Megan Kelly will make her first appearance for the dash coming in for Vizali whenever subs are allowed. About a minute remains as Houston looks to hold on to this one to zero lead to move on to the championship game. Houston also looking for their first victory against the Portland Thorns since 2016. So Portland will hold off on using their substitution. And Daly just plays this out. And now we should see Megan Kelly coming and she will replace Allie Prysock. I'm guessing that means that Sophie Schmidt is moving back to that center spot where Prysock was. And we saw Schmidt do that in the last game against Utah. So she'll hold down that role here for the next minute or so. 
Portland will need a push forward to try to find an equalizer here late if they want to send this to PKs. And Hansen simply plays this away to the touchline. Looks like all of the orange jerseys are back to play defense. Schmidt sends it sky high. If anything, that will just let the clock tick down. Houston patiently awaits that final whistle. Kelly sends it into the air. Kelly's debut and comes at a great time. Is the final whistle, and Houston has defeated the Portland Thorns, and they will move on to the championship game with a final victory of one to zero. Well, Jen, it took four years, but a big win for Houston as they move on to the championship game, eliminating the Portland Thorns. More important, more important than the four years since they beat Portland, it's the first time in franchise history, so let's say seven plus years that they reach a championship game. A huge knockout for the Houston Dash as they are the first team here in semifinals to move on to the championship game on Sunday.